The hurricane first flew in November 1935, and the Spitfire first flew in March 1936. So they weren't that far apart in terms of you know, first flight. They were both in design and sort of initial production at the same sort of time. But the, the hurricane effectively was the sort of the top end of the development of biplanes. It was built along the same lines as the, um, the biplanes of the 1920s and 30s. Whereas the Spitfire, in effect, was um, a brand new um, design concept and manufacturing concept, and that's why there were so few of them around at the start of the war. They were more difficult to produce. People didn't have those skills, whereas you know, the Hurricane itself was you know, metal tubes, wooden um, structure on the outside and covered in fabric. It was easy to do. They, they knew how to do that. In the Battle of Britain scenario, the, um, the, the fighter squadrons, when they were on standby, were all fully fueled armed, ready to go at a moment's notice, and they quite often would get scrambled, you know, four, five, six times a day. And as soon as the aircraft landed, they would obviously come back in dribs and drabs, be refueled, rearmed straight away. Um, but it was important to get them ready to go fly again as quickly as possible. Now, if uh, a lot of aircraft would obviously come back with a bit of battle damage, a few holes here and there, and in something like the Hurricane, you can take the side panels off, have a quick look inside, a bit of a hole in the fabric, Nothing's been touched, none of the control runs are touched, none of the metal structure is touched. Great, stick a patch on it, that's it, it's good to go. Whereas the Spitfire, very different, it's um, a stressed skin, so any, any holes in the skin actually affect the actual structure. They had to look far more carefully at the actual airframe when it did suffer damage. And the repairs were obviously a lot more um, involved and complex as well.